Are you following Jesus? Do you know if you're doing it right? Or are there some steps that you might be missing? Have you ever felt unsure about how to know that you're walking in step with Jesus? My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring a group of people called Lifeline Church. And I'm so glad that you're tuning in with us today. Our mission here at this church is to be a lifeline, like our name suggests, in order to help people, lead people even, to becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. No matter where you're watching from today, I believe that you are not here by accident, but God has been preparing a message that He wants to deliver straight to your heart, so I'm glad you're here. Now, today's Midweek Mentor is all about how to be a lifelong Jesus follower. And yeah, it can be a little complicated at times. It can be a little stressful at times. It can be a little overwhelming at times, but we're gonna find out today that that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually a very good thing. And that's one great way to know that, that things are going just right. I asked at the beginning of this message, how do you know if you're doing it right? Well, I want to today describe to you a three-step kind of check box, check marks to help you know that, yeah, I'm walking in step with Jesus. I'm, I'm following Jesus with my life. And if you're interested in becoming a, a Jesus follower or if you're, your spirit is waking up to the fact that we are created and that there is a spiritual world out there and I want to be more in touch with that. I want to know what the truth is about a spiritual life, about the spiritual world then I think this will help you um, quite a bit in, in determining and measuring your steps to say, you know what, I, I wanna follow Jesus with my life. I want to, I wanna follow the one true God, as my, my daughter calls him, the one true God. <laughs> She's five years old. I don't know why that's her favorite word for God, but her favorite name for God is the one true God. She'll ask me, the one true God? <laughs> yeah, the one true God, Emma. That's, that's the one, the one true God. And uh, there's, there's three things we can do uh, to be sure that we're following in step with Jesus and uh, being, as we would call, a disciple of Jesus. And the first one of those things is taking up your cross daily. Taking up your cross daily. And I want to read to you um, out of Luke 9. I've got it right over here. Luke 9, verses 23 and 24. This is Jesus talking. Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower... You must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Now, the thing about Jesus taking up his cross and the thing about Jesus and what he had to go through, what a lot of people, even believers, don't realize is that Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. He didn't want to bear that pain. Actually, if you, if you read the account of, of Jesus getting crucified, right before he was arrested, he was praying to the Father, God, take this away from me. If there's any way that, that this burden can be taken from me, please take it. Because it's not something he wanted to do, but not my will, but yours be done. Right? So taking up your cross when, when Jesus says to take up your cross, he doesn't, he's not necessarily saying you have to literally die. It could mean that. In some parts of the world, it really does. But I think in a very, in a, in a zoomed out, big picture kind of way, this act of selflessness is not something Jesus did for himself. It's, it's the fact that he was doing something for others. And that's what Jesus says we should be doing. Take up your cross and, and take on burdens for God and for the people God loves, which is your neighbor, which is simply everybody. Take up your cross for others. Being a disciple of Jesus is not supposed to be, or if you haven't decided to do it yet, I hope you're really getting teased into it. It's not going to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. It's not something, well, you know, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm really looking for that easy life. So I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a Jesus following Christian now because I'm looking for the easy life. 
Well, some things will be easier, some things will be simpler, but, <laughs> but if you're looking for an easy life, man, go sell ice cream, you know? Um, everyone loves you, you never do anything wrong. You know, the ice cream truck comes into my, um, my neighborhood about once a week, and man, he's a winner. <laughs> Every time, it's hard to, make, hard to make us mad when you come in selling ice cream, but when you're a Jesus follower, so sometimes it means going through some things that you don't necessarily want to go through. And so checkbox number one of being a Jesus follower means taking up your cross daily. It's what Jesus said to do, is to take up your cross daily and learn to suffer. Learn to suffer for others. Learn to suffer for God and put myself in a position where, man, this is not for me necessarily. This action I'm doing is not for me necessarily. Or this thing that I... I don't want to do, you know, I'm going to do this because I know it's going to bless God. I know it's going to bless my family. I know it's going to bless the people around me, but it may or may not be the thing that, that I want to do for myself. Um, I can think back, I can think back on when I was an early Christian, baby Christian. Sometimes I still feel like a baby Christian. Hashtag baby Christian. <laughs> Sometimes I think back to that. And, and one of the first things I needed to do was, um, one of the first big decisions I had to make was what to do with my work situation, what I was going to do with my job. And I was faced with either uh, choosing a, a work and, and a job that was um, going to make me a little more money. But I knew God was calling me into being a more active Christian, into what I found out later was ministry and leadership, uh, where we're all called to full-time ministry, all of us, whether you get paid or not. Um, but I didn't know at the time that God was going to call me into vocational um, ministry where I was getting paid for that. But before that, I had to choose, you know what, I'm going to work this other job before I was, you know, with the church that was making less money. But I knew I was going to be available for more life groups. I knew I was going to be available um, to lead the music. I knew I was going to be available to do different things because, because that's what I wanted to do with my life more than money. I wanted to take up my cross in that way and, and sacrifice earning a little bit more money because I knew that was going to benefit the church. I was going to benefit people around me. It's going to benefit my future family. I wasn't married at the time, and so I was single. But still, I knew that I had to give a little bit of that up. And somebody out there is saying, man, I think I'm called to quit my job. Man, well, I didn't say it, but I'm not going to say whether God said to uh, adjust your work situation but it's any number of things that can be affected by um, taking up your cross and saying, you know what, this is going to be better for the Lord and for the people of God, but it may not be better for my own leisure time or pocketbook or whatever it is. I'm going to take up my cross and, and do what I know is best for the kingdom. So that's number one is taking up your cross daily, being a lifelong Jesus follower. It's taking up your cross on a daily basis. Number two thing is um, we need to know what the greatest commandment, <clears throat> the greatest commandment. There is, there is one commandment that kind of sums up the, the life of a Jesus follower where it can be very complicated at times to um, discern whether or not, you know, what I should do, what I shouldn't do, what's right, what's wrong. There's debates on both sides. What do I do? I'm not sure. Well, Jesus made it simple for all of us, um, and he summarized all of the law, all the prophets into one uh, great commandment, and I want to read it to you. It's out of Matthew 22, uh, verses 36 through 40. And it goes like this. Teacher, this is somebody asking him a question. Which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. You see this kind of this kind of reminds us of what we just talked about. So love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Being a disciple, a follower of Jesus, means that we need to follow in his footsteps and his commandments. And, and lucky for us, he summed them up because I'm, I don't know about you, I'm kind of a simple guy. You know, I, I need things to be simplified for me. And... I know all of you are much smarter than me. Most of you, anyways, are much smarter than me. The only reason I'm kind of am where I am is because I got a lot of smart people around me. I, I realize this. I know this. It's all good. 
But Jesus made it simple for even very simple people, people like me, where I need to focus on really just a couple things. Loving the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving my neighbor as myself. And this actually has a lot to do with the reason why we we call our group of people, our church, Lifeline is because we really resonate with this great commandment is we want to be a lifeline to our community. We want to be a lifeline to our neighborhood, to our, the schools around us, to the, to the neighborhoods around us. And we want to show that love to our neighbor. Now, when Jesus said neighbor, the, the, the passage right after this really talks about uh, because the person asking the question said, well, who's my neighbor? Hoping that it would be a smaller group of people, Jesus goes on to explain, simply put, a whole nother message for a whole nother day I could go on about. But simply put, this is talking about every single person that crosses your path is your neighbor. And we're supposed to and called to show love to every single person. Um, it doesn't matter like if they're in our people group. It doesn't matter if they're black and we're white. It doesn't matter if they're white and we're black. It doesn't matter if they're Jewish and we're Christian. It doesn't matter if they are, you know, fill in the blank of thing that um, religious groups are known for not getting along with. Jesus said, it, and even the story itself, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan, as is right after this, talks about how, a Samaritan came walking down the road to, to help a Jewish person. And back then in those times, a Samaritan was a not supposed to be, well, a Jew really was not supposed to be engaging with a Samaritan because, you know, it's like right wing, left wing. You know, we, we don't get along. We're not supposed to be hanging out with each other. But the good neighbor was, even though it was from a whole different political party, a whole different view set, a different nationality that don't get along you know, um, it was that Samaritan that just put all of that aside to show love to the person who was wounded on the side of the road. And that's the kind of love we're called to have. Being a lifelong Jesus follower means having compassion on people, not just the ones who are like us, the ones who are not like us, and fighting for that Fighting for that compassion for people who aren't exactly like us, it's, it's very special. The fact that the story Jesus tells right after this would describe people from two radically different groups, but the one that was looked down upon was showing love on the, on the one that supposedly in, in that time had the high ground. You know, I don't want to make anybody mad today. People are mad enough out there, so I'm not going to use like any examples of who's who. But just try and think, try and picture someone who a Christian would not like, a person who a Christian would not like. Now imagine a Christian gets in a car accident, is in a burning car, and imagine the person that a Christian is normally supposed to be associated with despising that person, and that person is the one that pulls them out of a burning car. That's the kind of story Jesus told right there. He said, that's the one who was a good neighbor. That's the one who was showing the kind of love that I'm calling you to have. That's the great commandment. And that's being a, that's, that's being a Jesus follower right there. It's showing that kind of love for the people who are not like you. Now, the last one is this, the great commission. So we've talked about taking up your cross, We've talked about the great, command, the great commandment, but now there's a great commission. There's something, there's an action step for us to do. There's something that we're called to do. And it's called the great commission. And it's one of my favorite passages in all of the Bible. It's one of the greatest things. It's the thing that fires me up the very, very most when I talk about it. And it's found in Matthew 28. And it goes like this. Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, this is right before Jesus is going up ascending into heaven. I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. Now that's kind of reminiscent to 
what we just talked about. There's all these commandments, but they're really, we can encapsulate them into this great commandment. Teach those disciples to obey all those commandments and be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, I want to get back to something I, I started off with is that I know I'm a, I'm a full-time pastor and anybody who kind of knows me knows that Tiffany and I, we, we work for the church, you know, we're, we're in full-time ministry, but I want to, I want to crush that right now because being a follower of Jesus means you are in full-time ministry. If you have made the decision and are a self-proclaimed Christian and, and, claim to be a Jesus follower, this means that you are in full-time ministry as well. And God is calling you to go into all the nations and for all different kinds of people groups and for all different kinds of people at your job, the people at your school, uh, the people in your neighborhood. How can you with wisdom bring the, the truth and love of Jesus to the people around you? And I think this is, people have lost touch of this. Christians, I'm gonna talk to you for a minute. Christians have lost touch of this and Christians have, have fallen back into this place of like being on the back foot defensive, trying to defend what they believe is right. When really God has called us to be the ones uh, penetrating uh, cultures and societies that, that don't agree with us, bringing hope, encouragement, and love, bringing, bringing light, shedding light on the things that, that people are, are that people are depressed and they're stressed out. You don't have to go far to see people like that. Christians are not supposed to be on the defensive. And I don't want to say offensive either because we're not called to be offensive, but we're called to go. We're called to be the ones not on the back foot, but on the front end and, and leading the way. Like it, it bothers me that there's companies out there that are leading the way in advertising and they know how to reach the, the next generation and they know how to uh, get the attention of, of people and and like Christians, where are we at? Like we, we should be moving forward and, and following the great commission that Jesus had met. Go into all the nations. The great commission will never change. It'll always be the great commission until Jesus comes back again. And so how can we get creative? And being a lifelong Jesus follower means inviting people into a life of faith and really giving your life to, to show them what that looks like, to bring them into a part of your life. Man, I've got, I've got people in my life all around me, uh, neighbors, uh, people that I golf with. You know, I don't get out much, you know, so I'm at the church a lot, but I'm at the golf course and in my neighborhood, you know, there's people around me that I know that they're looking for spiritual answers. And God has called me, not just me because I'm a pastor. No, really, it's all of us. We should all be looking around us all the time. Man, how can I invite people into this life-giving faith that I'm walking in? How can I give that away freely? And how can I help them uh, to understand these commandments like the, like the way I just did with the greatest commandment in, in Matthew 22. Love, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. It's not rocket science, but it, there is a selflessness about it. The fact is that if you're truly following Jesus, taking up your cross daily and loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself, that should naturally flow into a place where you are getting out, going out, finding people that, that need hope, encouragement, and love, like we talk about every single week at this church. <laughs> hope, encouragement, love, something we talk about all the time. But that is not something that I just say at the beginning of my message. It's something that, that we should be living by all the time. How can I bring hope to my community? How can I bring hope to my home? How can I bring hope to my workplace? How can I bring encouragement to my workplace, my home, the golf course, the tennis court? Does anybody play tennis? Nobody plays tennis. It's a weird thing to say. <laughs> maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but in time, if you're following Jesus, you're going to overflow into other people's lives. And that's a checkbox. Like that's, if, if that hasn't happened in a while, then I would encourage you as a Jesus follower to reevaluate how closely in step, because Jesus was constantly, constantly bringing people into his circle that didn't belong there. 
but he made belong there because he was able to encourage them out of the situation they in, whether they were a tax collector, whether they were a prostitute, didn't matter to him. He brought the truth in love. And some of the greatest followers that were right there with Jesus were the worst of the worst right before they met him. So let's not limit ourselves. The point is, once we make the decision about Jesus, we have to figure out what to do about it. And lucky for knuckleheads like me, and for some even smart people need a reminder every once in a while, I've got to turn from my selfish ways and I've got to learn how I can give my life away to reach others. Well, I hope that blessed you today. And I hope that um, if you need anything in the description, there's a couple links you can follow to get connected with us here at Lifeline. Um, and again, if this content blessed you today, be sure to like, comment and share so that we can help get the word out. It really does help a lot to subscribe on YouTube or share on Facebook. Um, even just a comment or the thumbs up button, the like button goes a long way. And uh, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am so grateful and thankful for this platform to help encourage people in their walk with you and even encourage people that just want to know more about you, Lord. And I, I pray for everyone on their walk of faith and everyone interested in, in, in learning more about their faith, Lord. I pray, I pray that you would bring them in, in in the way that only your Holy Spirit can draw us in. I'm so grateful for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you again next time.